Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Today we're going to be looking at a, a, another very interesting topic. We're looking at bullying. And joining us to discuss bullying, we have Bolale Edwards. She's the founder and chief responsibility officer of the Strap and Safe Child Foundation. She's also the CEO of Mary Edwards Interiors Designs. She's an active member of NECA's network of Net of entrepreneurial oh, women woman. under the umbrella of Nigeria's Employers Consultative Association. Consultative. She has a really long and interesting profile, but thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Us. Good evening. Good evening. Why did you start the Strap um, and Safe, and Child, Safe Foundation. Child Foundation? Um, this started about 10 years ago um, from um, the things I was seeing on the road, and normally of drivers, the way children are being conveyed from one point to the other. And I told myself that I needed to do something about it. I can't keep complaining in my corner and not coming out to talk to people about how safely they can handle their children. So it was brought about roughly 10 years ago. And ever since then, we've been advocating on all platforms we can lay our hands upon. And has it improved? Are people strapping their children? Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a bit better. It's a bit better, but it can be better than now, than what we have right now. And we've gone a, um, a step further. It's not just strapping now, but we're also talking about safety at home safety at school and when they're on the roads. So it's a holistic um, view altogether. All right. Still speaking about children and their safety, one of the things that does affect, you know, the emotional health mm. of children would be bullying, Absolutely. bullying in schools. And today we're going to be looking at bullying in schools, causes, solutions, and how to end how to this. It. So maybe we should go straight into what some of the causes of bullying are. You know, we know that there are many parents that have children in school. Mm. I was bullied in primary four, and I still remember. I was as well. I can remember the girl's name, <laughs> I her stature, but I didn't know what she was doing to me. All I knew was that I was very unsafe around her anytime she was around. Yeah. Yes, I remember mine as well. <laughs> so what would we, we say, uh, you know, you're the expert here, what would you say are the causes of bullying in school? So many things. Um, some children are very, they feel very, um, they have this complex problem going on with them. Some of them want to have this um, defensive attitude. Rather than come out to you to say, I can't do this, they will rather bully you or take you out of their space. So a lot of issue, it can be social as well when some children feel that they, they want to belong to a certain class of the society or the kind of friends that they keep, um, some of them feel that um, they don't want to be in a low cater kind of, you know, that they would rather be where their friends are. So they would rather bully them. And most of them, again, feel very unsafe. They would rather come out at you rather than just pull you to themselves. So a lot of issue surrounds it. And of course, um, we have children as well who don't have really good relationship with their parents the guardian or the custodian. So they'll go out, the bully, and they get bullied as well. Some of these children also get bullied at home by their siblings. You'll, right. be, you'll be alarmed at the rate of bullying going on right now in all the spaces you can imagine. And when we, when we talk of bullying, I don't know if we pay as much attention to bullying as we pay to other issues that children have to face. We're pay, playing a, um, putting a lot of focus on sexual abuse, which is a big deal. Mm. But we don't realize that bullying is also a big deal because it mentally affects it and destabilizes children. So what would we say uh, are some of the effects that bullying has on children? I know for certain that it can be one of the ways in which a person mm. can be sexually abused. Absolutely. Because you bully them into yes. hiding beneath a shell. Absolutely. Yes, we have, I'm sure you have adults who also talk about being bullied when they were, more, you know, much smaller. Some of those children at school, and I see this happen a lot in public schools, where children don't really have people defend them. And when they report to the teachers, really, they're like, you're on your own. It's also going on in private school as well. I have a friend whose son said, hey, I can't stay in boarding school anymore, mommy, because I've been bullied all the time. So um, the adverse effect most times is psychological. It can be physical, it can be mental, and it can also be cyber. A lot of these children as well go on the internet and, I mean, we've heard abroad, I mean, around the world where people get cyber bullied and eventually they commit suicide. We see that is creeping gradually into our society right now. This part of the climb is not so big, yet we have the very subtle ones that are making children feel very less of themselves. It's alarming to know that um, it's about 78%, especially boys, 78% of boys have been bullied mm -hmm. in schools. So would you say that our culture has a way of encouraging bullying in a way that, you know, we inhibit children? So, for example, you mentioned that 78% mm. of boys. Mm. We do have a culture that thinks that as a man, you should man up, you know. Yeah. Don't express your emotions. Yes, but um, things are much better now. Unlike before when we were, some of us are growing up, you dare not talk to your parents and say, but daddy, I feel what you're saying isn't right. Um, it's general. Bullying is the same everywhere. 
is more just that the statistics are different. In this part of in this part of the climb, you know, you see children now beginning to speak out. Unlike some 10, 20 years ago, you won't find children, they would rather be recluse, keep to themselves, keep some certain friends, and at the end of the day, you know, it gets out of hand. So really, it's not as much as we have abroad and we have, um, compared to Nigeria here. But are, there, are there factors that predispose children to bullying? So many factors. So many. Like I said, um, some children would rather be amongst their fellow bully, <laughs> bullies or bullies, what would I call them now? Yeah. Um, the psychological, social economy as well can also be part of it. Children come back home at times feeling very dejected that they are not the same, they're not the same level with their friends. And they complain to their parents, some of them don't get this friendship or relationship they're looking for with their parents. They can't confide in them. So they'd rather go talk to strangers, and these strangers, at the end of the day, most times, or some of the time, abuse them. Um, factors, books as well. You know, in this climb right now, we have children who are emotionally stressed. And this can also be part of bullying. They are so stressed that there's so much work they're doing. They have become recluse. They study most of the time. They have so much, so many homeworks to attend to. Now I'm glad that you <laughs> mentioned that. Lately, we've been seeing parents coming out to complain on social media. Victoria uh, Bisola Ayola did a very hilarious video talking about how. We're looking into that as well. Yes, that she goes out, into that. works as a mother, <laughs> comes home, and she's giving the five-year-old is having like eight homework you know, to deal homework with. Homework that the child cannot do. Cannot In fact, the homework do. is actually for the mother. Do you think that that's Emotion also a very huge problem? It's emotion, it's a, we call it emotional bullying because right now it's, it's huge and it's beginning to affect children. The, the feedback we're getting from the children is not so good. They're telling you, I'm tired. They're so, you know, they're not as vibrant as they should be. When they should be out playing with their friends, you find them, you know, going out to either sitting down by themselves, reading, studying or doing other things. So we really have, it's an issue right now, and um, it's creeping really fast on us. All right, before we wrap up the conversation, the phone lines are open very briefly. We will be wrapping up in a bit. If you want to participate in the conversation, you want to ask questions, you want to contribute, please feel free to call the numbers to call out on your TV screens. And now, when we talk about bullying, a lot of the times we focus on the victims. We don't look at the bullies themselves. The bullies themselves. So maybe we should, for a minute, look at the bullies and, you know, what makes them do what they do. Because we find that hurts people hurts people so absolutely they're inflicting this pain the absolutely. best way they know most how. of the bullies are they're 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 the children who are kind of aggressive they're aggressive they're in a safe environment and they want everybody around them to be unsafe they don't want you to be comfortable around them misery loves company absolutely so they'll rather surround themselves with fellow bullies that they can share notes and plan together and you know carry out this their bullying act together so most of the time you find out that bullies, funny enough, they get bullied as well. That's what we don't know. They also get bullied. But question is, how do we handle them? How are the schools handling these children? Okay. Because, so, yes. Yes, because now you find out that, yeah, we're paying so much school fees, but then how much of this bullying is the school, you know, um, attacking head on? I was in a school two weeks ago and... Um, Beautiful, they had this anti-bullying week, you know, from cradle to primary five. And I went to talk to them about bullying. And so many of them were raising up their hands to say that, hey, I get bullied by my own siblings. It can be physical, it can be verbal. And, all right. And this goes a long way. Now, let's, let's now, since we've extracted all the problems that surround bullying, let's start to tackle them and look for solutions. You've mentioned that bullying can be done in the school. In the school. By your peers. Even by parents. By your teachers, by your by parents, parents. And by your siblings. By siblings. So let's look at how we can attack this bullying. Sometimes what we call bullying is what some people call discipline. They're they don't discipline. understand. So mm -hmm. I have been flogged by a senior who was a year ahead of me in boarding house. Boarding house. 13 strokes of the cane at the back of my my hand wow. because I did not get her food. Wow. Now, given the benefit of hindsight, that wasn't any form of mm -hmm. discipline. She was just bullying, she was me bullying you because of her position. So, how do we, how first of all, do people who are being bullied stand up for themselves? Um, they have to wear this confidence. They have to be bold. They have to be able to speak out. I get very worried when children don't talk. When children are too quiet, I don't like it because most of the time they don't get to say what they're going through. 
So they need to be confident. You need to begin to build their confidence from home. So it starts from the, it starts from the home. So that anywhere the children find themselves, they can always stand out for themselves. Um, like this boy that I gave the scenario right now. I mean, he could have actually stayed in boarding house, but because he doesn't want to go through that trauma, he just said, you know what? I will do day and school. And there's a lot of that in boarding houses. In boarding house. It's not like it doesn't go on in day, houses, day school as well. But boarding houses, I'm telling you, it's, oh, trust it's me. terrible. I went to a boarding house, uh -huh. so I can tell. <laughs> it's terrible. So they really they have to be able to stand up. Of course, and report to somebody older so that they can um, help them speak on their behalf and also I caution, um, caution the person who is bullying the other victim because it's very important as well to get them to have their back at any point in time. All right, so we've talked about the children. The children need to learn to speak up and, you know, stand up for themselves. For themselves. And this is a role that parents need to take wear on, building the children's self-esteem. Parents self will know. Exactly, their self-esteem, mm -hmm. parents will know. Now let's look at the schools. What roles do this, or what role does the school have in curbing bullying? I like the fact that most of the schools are coming up with um, anti-bullying programs now, whereby the ones in a while, during the term, they come up with um, contents to deal with bullying and also encourage and tell children and also educate them on what bullying is all about. For all you know, bullies don't even know they're bullying. It's just their nature. They're just some aggressive children that just want to get at everybody in sight. All right, hold our thoughts. Let's speak with Abraham from Lagos. Hello, Abraham. Thank you for calling. Yeah, my lovely sister. Nice talking with you tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, um, okay. I'm calling you from Ikoi. All right, Abraham. Talk to us. Uh, Do you have so a question or a comment? I work in Ikoi, really, okay. but I stay in um, Ikorodu. Okay. Um, I like the copy of tonight. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, can I just say this? Um, I was thinking about this whether to report to the to the owner of the school. Okay. I find out that the the teacher in my one of my son in my size the I have three children. I have four children in the school. One boy, then the three girls. Then there's a day I paid visit to the school. What I saw with the teacher with my husband, I told her about it. So I don't know what to go ahead and report her to the Sorry, teacher. Sorry, can you say that again? Person. You said you saw something with the teacher. With the teacher. Yes. I find out that though I normally pay money, both the school, I bought all my book, all the, my children's book in school. Okay. I don't normally buy. Yes. So what exactly did you see that you're asking if you should report? I, when I went to the school, because I, as they resumed, they changed teacher, really. So I was just like, let me go and know. Eh. Okay. I find out that my, my boy was using a, 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 a marker to write instead of pencil, instead of biro, I mean. Because I pay all those money, reading with the biro and the pencil and everything, both with the book in the school. But she don't, she is aware about it, and she didn't do anything. She didn't bother to say, ah, what are you using it to write? So I just saw it, and she said, ah, I didn't know. And I, I called the boy, I said, ah, didn't you report this to your teacher? She said she, she reported it to her, that she didn't do anything. I said, ah, and when she, when I, when she see the way I was reacting, he just said, ah, she didn't tell me. He went ahead and bring her the, the bottle of the pencil. I was so embarrassed. Okay, time, so I went after I went back home. I saw a mark of my boy back after they have finished taking their bath. Then I asked the boy, I said, What happened? He said it was the teacher because she, he was writing slow, he didn't fasten enough. Mm. So okay. I was, I was, I feel bad. I went to the school to ask what happened. She said she did, was using uh, one thing like that to flock her, ah. to flock him. I said, now, mm -mm. now these children is on, on, under your own care. Very for true. Now. Okay. Except when they come back home. All right. For now, you are the parent, you are the mother, okay, you are the, if everything. Because if anything f happened to them, it's you they will hold responsible. She wouldn't know what to say. So I was just having it in mind. I don't know whether I, 
do I change him from that particular school to another school? Okay, so or Abraham, if I, I get you correctly, if I get you correctly, you're not you're upset about the way the teacher mishandled your child and gave your child a mark, and you're also upset because your child uses a marker to write hmm. rather than a pencil, and the teacher pay, did not notice this. Pencil, biro, okay. everything in this All right. school. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing okay. your concerns with us. Wow. He, he already <laughs> jump-started the conversation because yes. I was going to ask you, you know, how parents should handle this. We've talked about the, the children. We're talking about yes. the school and then his I don't think Abraham should even wait till now. If I were in his shoes, immediately I saw the mark on the back of my child. I will go to that school the next day because he didn't get the mark from home. Once he clarifies the fact that he didn't get it from home, then he should go to the school. I think I record, um, I think he said he went to the school and... Then he should pull his kids from there. If it means him taking the children out of the school, then well be it. Let's talk about, you know, how disciplining children. Because we find that now things are starting to change. In my days, when I was younger, in secondary school, it was a normal thing for you to be flogged at your back Absolutely. and flogged anywhere the teacher deemed Anything. fit. Now that is starting to change. But what is the best way really to discipline children? Some people still hold on tightly to the fact that, you know, in our days, mm. when they were training us, they flogged us anyhow and we mm. turned out right. Yes. Is that the way to discipline children? Really? Doesn't so. that amount to bullying? <laughs> no, it's um, abuse more like. It can be abusive, really. If you use it out of, um, you shouldn't... Um, some of us were beaten. It wasn't that that beating turned us, we turned out to who we became now, but it was just a, some form of discipline. But um, I know a whole lot of schools wouldn't use cane. They call him Mr. Do Good. The children see the Mr. Do Good. But guess what? There are so many times that without using the cane, the children get the, they get, they say you get the memo. They understand the body language. For instance, my children's school, they don't use the cane, but if they have to, I mean, for them to have to use the cane, that child must be very... At times, parents will come and say, please use the cane on this boy, it's too stubborn. But they know Mr. Do Good. And once you know that, you know, deprive them of their play time, deprive them of the things that they would like to enjoy, it's worse than using the cane. All right. So on deprive them, understand what your child... Understand what your child um, loves does. and derives so much pleasure in. And take it away from them. And take it away from them. Okay. If so, you must use the cane, once they were as a parent, why not? Finally. But not in an abusive manner. Finally, a parent has just found out that their child is being bullied in school, bullied by their peers or bullied by the teacher. What should that parent do? If after the parent had gone to the school to find out exactly why that child has been bullied, and they can't give any... I mean, I don't know the kind of excuse you would give to me to tell me that, the child, especially when the child now begins to have marks on the body, that's become abusive then if school is not taking any decision about it, I think you should pull your children out of that place. It can actually happen anywhere as well, but be sure, that's why you must make due diligence. Make your inquiries before taking your children to school. Fantastic. We will wrap up this conversation in a moment, but we have Linda calling from Lagos. Hello, Linda. Good evening, and thank you for calling. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. I want to contribute to the program. Please go All ahead. Right. I'll make it quick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I have a, a child in, in basic three. And at and, and the, and the end of the day, they will give her about five or six homework. <laughs> and uh, at the time, I, will ask, I, 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 I called call the, uh, the teacher. He told me that they want to complete, they want to complete the, syllab the syllable. And I said, the, 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 the homework is too much. Too much. Because when my child comes back from school, she will be very, very tired. I don't know, I don't know the kind of homework they are giving them. Okay. Have you, you've complained to the school, have you? Yes, I've complained. I complained to the teacher. And they what did they, they say? Do. They said they have to complete, the, they have to, they make sure they finish the book. All right. Thank you very much for <laughs> sharing that, Linda, very quickly. What, this is the yes, same conversation. Fact, we... same conversation. In fact, it's ongoing and we're going to do, we're putting up a document concerning this. We call it emotional safety. It's a place where children are begin to feel unsafe with academics. We feel that loading them so much with books, makes them a better person. I don't know where this come from. I don't know when the, all this started, but I remember when I was growing up, we didn't have to do so much in work. We, just, still, we just like hard life in We Nigeria. just, you know, I don't there's know why. so much, compared to when the children now live here to go somewhere else outside Nigeria, I begin to wonder that why. I, I mean, I, I was looking at Finland and the education system, and the children don't have to read half as much as we do, yet they have the best, one the of the best The other day I was reading on social media about a guy, a parent who flogged his daughter for not being able to write one to 200. 
a four or a three year old. I mean, for me, that it's so uncalled for. It's All right. totally unacceptable. There's so much more with regards to this conversation, unfortunately, that we can't take. And there are people okay, who okay. might want to have conversations and ask you questions personally. So how can people contact you? Please, our number is um, 08... Let's do your social media instead. Social media, yes. at Strap and Safe. All right. S-T-R-A-P-A-N-D-S-A-F-E, -A -A, at Strap and Safe. So if you have questions, you know, contributions, comments, suggestions, please contact them at Strap and Safe Thanks. on Instagram, on Twitter, on Twitter, and on Facebook. On Thank Facebook. you so much You're for joining welcome. us. To enjoy more of these our Ogonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.